We're on our way to Sandy Island, and this is the boat ramp. This actually is the school boat. It's the only uh, island that has a place that has its, its own school boat for its kids. And this is the, uh, Prince, the new Prince of Washington. And so uh, as we're passing through this kind of a open going towards the island, it's, uh, it was kind of carved out by for Green Gardens, help the residents there, um, to come from their homes and their kids to come to school here. I think back in the 60s or 70s, they carved this out of a land here to um, help the uh, residents to one, have an easier access to the road and the kids to come to uh, school here. And um, as you pass by, you can see some of the former uh, uh, rice fields that are still here because this was again, land that was ideal for uh, uh, rice growing. So uh, this is quite special here. And um, this area right here, as they're gonna cross over the uh, Wakma River, it's a, it's a place that was um, a natural barrier for, for those who were on the island. You know, they would come across here into their own world. And Sandy Island truly is a community that has um, been preserved, been self-determined, self-reliant, and independent from the mainland oftentimes. And in fact, it was said that there was no need for any police on the island because there were never any offenses there over, over the years. I'm Eric Crawford, director of a Charles Children Institute for Gullah and African Diaspora Studies at Coastal Carolina University. And so we're here taping this uh, a recording, taping uh, Laura Herrick cooking, and we've just arrived now on Sandy Island, which was a, a former place known for rice plantations, and uh, these former slaves built their own homes and bought their land back, and it's been one of the few Gullah communities that is still now self-contained. We can only get there by boat, as you just saw. And so now we're about to arrive there and go into her home and really experience what it's like to cook Gullah cooking. And, and, and she'll tell stories about how she learned these meals and how important they are to her family and hopefully to yours too. Before we begin, I'm Eric Crawford again. I'm here with Laura Harriet in her beautiful home. And we're socially distanced, so I believe if she doesn't mind, she'll take off her mask. And, and uh, Laura, we're so happy that you have us here and um, have invited uh, us here to hear you and talk about your culture and, of course, cook for us. And so thank you, our students, our those who are in the audience are just here to see you and hear you and to see you cook, of course. I'm delighted to do it. <laughs> and we're going to start first with the bread pudding. Now, b before we begin, yes. I've heard that bread pudding has oftentimes been associated with day-old bread. You would use bread that would have been around for a while. Can you talk about when you would normally cook or make bread pudding? When you would fix bread pudding when there was nothing else probably at the house to eat. And it would be old breads and they probably would fix it together with water and sugar and mix it up and put it in the oven and bake it and we would eat it. Now, do call the first time you saw someone cooking bread pudding and who that person was? My grandmother. And she fixed for us because we came from school that day and that was our food until we got some supper. So let's all, if we can, watch and Laura, you. First, I'm going to get the margarine. And next, I'm going to put some sugar in. If you desire about sugar, I'm going to put three scoops in this three, like I said, three cups of sugar. Now, is this um, low cal, low fat sugar, this, sweet low? This Dixie Crystal, <laughs> and just just regular um, blue bonnet margarine. You can use butter if you like, but it just I think would be less fatty just to use regular butter, mm -hmm. regular margarine. And I'm going to put two eggs. Your eggs are your choice for these egglings. And I'm gonna break two eggs and put it in here. I'm just gonna put this back in here for right now. Now, as a child, um, were, there, were there chickens here and you would go out yeah, and Yeah, you would use the chicken eggs, yes, the eggs that were laid, yes. The chickens were there and we would get the eggs from the chicken and mix it in. Because the, the egg just helped it, you know, rise it and give it nice and another flavor, I guess. Okay. I'm just gonna mix this up. Now we're we're here in your grandparents' home, right? And uh, Wilma's Cottage—that's the name. So now, who, 
Well, how'd you get that word, well, Wilma? My grandfather was named William, and my grandmother was named Mary. So to remember them and keep their memory going, I decided to call it Wilma Cottage. And it's it's an active cottage. Someone can come here and stay over and and eat for cooking. Yes, they can come for a day if they just want a day treat. I'll prepare a meal for them and give a little history of Sandy Island, and then I'll get. And if they want to come for a night, then I will give them another history and they'll prepare a meal for them. Yeah. And I'm going to mix the sugar and the cinnamon just to give it a little flavor. And I'll put the raisins in next. You can buy any kind of raisin, just, just the sun made here, just the raisins. I'm going to use one box of raisins. Now, if someone doesn't like raisins, are you, there other options for them? You can substitute it with apples. I'm not going to put any apple in this today because I don't know right now. But if they didn't want raisins, they could just... Peel the apple, cut it up, and put it just like you would do the raisins. Now, um, after you make this dish, of this bread pudding dish, it will feed how many people? This should feed about 12 people. 12 this people. dish. Okay. Or two hungry students. <laughs> uh, and they can also save some if they want for later. They can put it in the refrigerator, or they can put ice cream on top of it, or different other stuff. Mix it up. And you put the bread in last. Okay. You don't have to br break it up. You can just put, as you put the bread in, you can add the milk. Now, uh, how much milk do you use for this? That depends on how, 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 how more you want your pudding to come out. Okay. So we're just going to do this. Just going to pour some milk. And we're going to mix this up. Oh, wow. That looks good here. Oh, my. And so you were saying that we just um, depending on if you want it to be more solid or more yes. liquidy. Okay. You can just add it. You don't have to um, break it up. You can just keep mixing. Keep adding milk. Now, when do you know when it's time for it to be ready to pour into your dish? We are getting closer. Getting closer. This is, <laughs> this is the last. <laughs> I'm going to put the breast of bread in. You can use a whole loaf. It doesn't matter because it's just, you can use old bread or you can just buy yourself a new. If you have some in the refrigerator that you had for a long time and want to get some used to it, you can just do it like this and make your bread pudding. Okay. So is that an important part of, of a living here is... Um, nothing ever went to waste. Because you, you didn't have the access to go across a river all the time when you wanted something. So what you would use your leftover and just make the essence of it. Mm -hmm. And everybody couldn't afford, at the, in, in those days, you know, we use what you have. Mm -hmm. And let it be a, a meal, at least a stomach meal. So see, it's about getting there. Right. You're just going to use it whole. Oh, that looks wonderful. Oh my, yes, yes indeed. So again, you can use um, raisins or apples, you can mission eat. peaches or other? Yeah, you can use other fruits in there also if you would like. Some people don't want raisins, you can just put fruits, peaches, apples. Even you can slice the banana real softly and then put oh, it in there too, yes. and that will give it another flavor. It would, yes indeed. Yeah, pineapple. But we just do it the simple way. We didn't have all that stuff at those days, so that we just use what we had. But do, as things get better, Life goes better, things get better. You yes, can use indeed. more. So you, you would see your grandmother doing this yes. uh, as a child? Yes. Yeah, and this is her bowl she used to use also. Oh, my. And I try to hold it as long as I can. <laughs> I don't blame it's you. for sentimental. Yes. Hmm. And now we're going to put it in the bowl. So now we're going to pour it into pour it the... In this, yes. Okay. Now what size pan is that? This is a. Uh, this is four. This is a 12, 11 by 12 by 13. Okay. Yes. And I put a little oil in it just to keep it more. So just let it rip. And you can spread it out in. And just for just to garnish it a little bit, just put some more of that cinnamon right on top of it. Oh wow. 
place it in the oven for an hour and a half. At what temperature? At 375. Now you're using a fancy stove here now, but in the old days... It was the done. wood stove, and it would be in there for probably an hour or so. So a while, wood stove would cook faster yeah, or slower? Slower. It'd be a couple of hours. So that's your bread pudding? That's the bread pudding. Wow. Is that sort of a, a main meal on the island or, or just in that, general? When, at that time, I think it would, I, it would used to be, mm -hmm. but now I think people, they get away from it. But most of the time when I bring my guests, that's what I use to serve them. Yeah. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And it's very simple dessert. Mm -hmm. Everything is in one. And it's, the prices is low because bread don't cost that much. Margarine and eggs, you know, so it's inexpensive, but it's good. So I think the, ki the kids would get a... Well, that's in the oven. What, what are you going to make for us next? I'm going to do the punch. And now, that's my personal favorite. So please watch this wonderful punch here. Um, she has some secret additions that I think you will definitely find fascinating and enjoyable. Now, while you're setting up for the punch, can you talk about um, your grandfather? And, you know, he kind of kept building, adding on to this wonderful cottage, although he was blind. Right, because he was a builder. I think he used to work at a llama company. That was his first. But he was in the military. It was World War II. He was in World War II. So I think he probably learned a lot of trade before he went to the war and then came back and did stuff. So how was he able to, uh, I'm curious, well, to still build and, you know, do well, work in the house? He mostly would, I guess, feel his way, mostly, too, because he would walk from one end of that fence to the other end and come back and do that. Then he would just sort of, that's why the house, some part is tall and some part is short. When he lost his sight, that's when people just did, was doing whatever they feel like doing. So, because he was a very tall man. Oh, he was? Oh, wow, wow. Yes. All right, so now this punch, can you use, All right, we're gonna, tell us how to make this punch? This is, okay, we're going to first, we're going to take the wine punch. Okay. I should have two pictures, but I don't have one. I'm going to make a small. Now, how did you create this or this, how did you make this? I came up this myself. When we was going to school in Columbia Commercial, we used to have parties and stuff. So I had to make the party. So I decided to do it this way, but I'm not going to tell you what else I put in the punch. <laughs> Because y'all don't want to hear about that one. No. <laughs> and so this is going to do punch. a Yeah, I'm going to do half, half a wine. Make sure you get the wine juicy red one. Right. Yeah. And orange juice. Well, it will get the one that is, don't get the, con the one that you make, get the consecrated one. Right. And put. The concentrated okay. orange juice. Yeah, we're going to bring it right half that way. So half and half? Half or? and half. We're going to do half and half. half we're doing half. a small amount here. Okay. And we're going to put the pineapple juice, get the one in, you know, shake it. And how much of that? Is it equal? Yeah, or? we're going to equal. Equal. We might have to come back some. Okay. Now, how, how important is it to have um, punch or maybe in old days tea or lemonade with your meal? I think most of the time we just mostly had water. Oh, we didn't wow. drink a lot of tea. You know, it was Kool-Aid for the kids. Okay. Most was Kool-Aid because mm -hmm. it was a five cent, two cents a pack or whatever we could get at that time. So, right. and sugar was not so plentiful because you couldn't grow sugar. So, you had to buy it from the store. So you had to be careful with that part. Yeah. We're gonna add a little bit more with this. And I talk about the fact that if you couldn't grow it. Um, then it was difficult because then you had to go over the water to get it, yeah. And that, that time we had to go away to Book Green up oh, the creek, right. then get going to the main drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how long of a a row or in your well, boat was that going to be? It was. It probably would be, I guess, about twenty minutes because mm -hmm. he had the row. Well, fortunately, by the time they started that, I was not going anywhere then. I was still a kid because you really didn't get to go over until you get like in high school. I was so you wouldn't grade. go across really until have, you were in Because yeah, you yeah. had no reason to go unless you had to go to the doctor or something. And so, because everything was really here and kids, the parents, they made their own clothes and stuff like that. So it really wasn't so much stuff that kids had to go because we had mostly play little stuff around here, hide and seek and had our little get together and <laughs> t jump rope and basketball <laughs> and baseball. So it was always right. something. It was a lot and we always had stuff to do. Right. Were you curious about, you know, I wonder what it was like. What, what it's like on the other side of the... Never thought the about it, you know. 
it seems crazy because I guess we had each other. Mm -hmm. It was fun too. Okay. But it was interesting because when we did go, we just we didn't already hang out with two other kids, just the one that most was from here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. all right, we're gonna add some sugar. Oh, you add sugar to this? Gotta put some sugar. Oh if my gosh. <laughs> we're gonna put some sugar. How much sugar do you uh, know me add? That this? desire because you need to get the taste to see because the pineapple juice is gonna make it sort of tangy and also the orange juice and this don't have no sugar in it all that much. So you have to put some sugar. So we're gonna use, and this should be a cup, we're gonna use like, we're gonna do four of these. Wow. And it's not, and then we're gonna. And this, the college kids can make that right when they're having a little party. Just don't <laughs> add no alcohol and they can go for it. <laughs> now, would you now I'm gonna stir it. chill this yeah. in the refrigerator? Yeah, okay. keep it in the refrigerator because that what, that's what makes it taste so good. And Eric, I'm going to get one of these punch things and let you sample it. Oh my, oh my, okay. See if it's sweet enough. Oh. Just a teaspoon. Just a teaspoon. See if that's okay. If that's sweet enough. Well, just have a little. Oh, that is wonderful. Okay. We oh, that is tangy and wow. It's tangy. Uh, yeah, that's think perfect. I that's good. That was perfect. It's perfect. Okay. Laura is now making breakfast rice, and uh, I think this would be a, a great dish for you. It's easy, simple. And um, before we begin, though, um, can you talk about the importance? of uh, rice and the Gullah culture on Sandy Island, just... Well, we never really have a meal without eating rice. And I guess because we grew up on it, it was once pounded from here and went to different countries, like supposed cities or whatever. And we never had a meal without rice. And I just love rice myself. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm gonna try to do a breakfast rice for you, wherein you still have your rice, you're not having your grits, you're gonna have rice. You're gonna have, I use everything that you have for breakfast, your eggs, bacon, your turkey bacon, also the regular bacon, and two types of breakfast sauces, maple and brown sugar, Ooh. and smoke sauces. Oh my and, God. And we're gonna combine everything together and cook it and put it in rice. There and you got everything except grits. Now, did you see this cooked uh, as a child, or did you make this yourself, or? <laughs> well, when I was working at Blue Cross, there was a guy that we had a cafeteria there, and he was fixed breakfast rice. But his breakfast rice did not have enough stuff in there. So I continued to make mine. Then I start making my little change to Blue Cross, doing my, <laughs> doing my little, putting mine in a bowl and then serving it. So I just start doing it. I don't really serve it to my guest that comes here unless they ask, because it is a lot of poke. And a lot of people just wear wear from it, but I do it. And this meal will feed how many people? This meal here is going to feed probably about, it'll probably feed about 10 people. Okay. Wow. Now, could this be a meal other than breakfast? Or? This could be any time for lunch, snack, whatever, breakfast, because it has rice. Mm -hmm. You can serve rice any time. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Sandy Allen's history with, with the rice has been well documented. Um, and um, your great, great uncle, was perhaps Abraham Harriet, was quite known for being this rice grower. Right, so, yeah. yeah. And he and Abel, where the rest, of, you know, the other descendants from him can continue to do the same. Right. Now, uh, did you ever taste what was known as that, that golden rice that, uh, that was back in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, that was so well known? I think I probably have, being a little child, but mm -hmm. basically couldn't say, but the only thing I think that would really set it off with me to eat would be the water-made rice, oh. that rice that, I, that I'm gonna put in here. Now what is water-made rice? It's a short grain rice. Is this right here? Yeah. The okay. Water-made rice. rice. Oh my. Oh, look at that. Oh, gosh. It's the short grain. I'm going to put it in a cup. It's a measuring bowl over there. But you don't put your rice in until everything is already started cooking. 
Then okay. your rice go in and then finish it up. Okay. So we got the meat going right now. We're trying to get a frying pan over for the bacon. And we'll stir it and then. Now, can can the audience use Uncle Benton's or something? Cheap, uh, not something. They can easy. use something different, <laughs> but I is my thing. I like water made well, because it's right. most of the time they come out perfectly. Right, most every time I cook it. Right. Right. <laughs> Now the eggs would go in last. Last, or? yeah. Okay. Uh, just before everything is finished, so it can still have that the whole keep it whole firm, so it wouldn't be cooked up so much. Right, right. Now you, I kind of mentioned having chickens here. You, a little girl, and the eggs. Would eggs a, a different taste or a different consistency? They are different. Okay. They're much different. What's the? Because uh, I think the the. The yolk in is much yellow. Okay. And I just put my bacon in another pan because after the bacon is fried, then I'm going to crush it up and put it in, to, in with the rice. Okay. Okay. Now, um, tell me about mixing these different meats, um, pork and turkey, and is that, does that help the uh, flavor? Or? That just gives it all flavor, let you know you had a taste of everything, mm -hmm. uh, two bacon. So the only two bacon we have now is turkey and the regular. Mm -hmm. And then there's, we have three sauces because we got the smoke, smoke sauce, then we got the breakfast sauce, and I use the honey, Ooh. brown sugar, and I use the maple. Right. And when it all mixed up, it'll have a different taste. Okay. You will need to add no season because it's take, it takes it over. You need to put no so salt, pepper, anything. All, all the flavor is mixed up into the sauces, comes okay. out of the sauces. Right. I tell you, you know, I haven't seen this much kitchen in years. You know, I, I, I use, my favorite tool is right here, microwave. If I can't microwave it, I'm in trouble there. Yeah. <laughs> I just put bacon, you know, to do it, but we're going to go a lot, we're going to do it a long way. Okay. We're not going to do the shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids, maybe they maybe have a a microwave at the dome. They probably can put the bacon in and let it fry faster. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And they can always heat the food up, you know, whatever. Right. Now, um, this dish mm -hmm. would uh, last how long? For, for if you prepare it, probably a whole week if you keep it in the fridge. Okay. Because I've made uh, dishes for different people, and they just put it up till they're ready for the next time. And they do bread pudding too. I get a lot of orders for bread pudding mm -hmm. also. Could you could you freeze it or is it best to put it in the? Uh, you can freeze it. Okay. You can freeze it. Okay. And then just if you wanted to, so like you say, you can put it in the microwave. Just get your a, a wet a napkin and put it on top of it, and that help moisten it. And then when you put the microwave on, it reheat itself. Oh, okay. I could just put it in the oven and put a little water steam pan to the bottom, and then that would bring it back to the same texture. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. This that smells, and I can smell that brown sugar. <laughs> That's a wonderful smell there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that is, that just really just smells good. Well, wow, while That's, that is coming, I can go in and cut up the cabbage and get the cabbage in the pot. Then that could be cooking also. Okay, now, so this mm -hmm. next meal, this like we, cabbage we meal. We're just going to move over from that because we got to wait till the meat cook down to put the rice in. So we just can go get work on the cabbage here. Okay. So uh, what kind of cabbage? meal are we going to make now? We're just going to make, we're going to like steam it a little bit. We're going to put a little, we're going to stick, I'm going to use this whole stick of butter in this cabbage. Well, now, how important is cabbage to low country cooking, gullah cooking? Is it, is it sort of a staple that you want to have or typical? Well, it's a vegetable that you have and you don't have to do so much with it. Mm -hmm. And it has water, it's make it on water so you don't have to put no water in and just let it cook down. So, so you wouldn't add water to any kind of cabbage? No, you don't have to add water to oh, cabbage because wow. this cabbage is more like um, lettuce uh, it, and it keeps it, it's good for you because mm -hmm. it has a lot of water. Right. right. Yes. My, um, my dad would always put uh, sausage in his Ca cabbage. Yes, you can. Uh, some mm -hmm. people even add carrots in there also. Oh, okay. And that bring, helps. Uh, even red or bell pepper just to give it a little color flavor. Right, right, right. Now, did, did you ever see your... Grandmother um, making a uh, cabbage dish or? Just cabbage like I'm doing there. Just cut it up and season it with salt and pepper. Put a little margarine in the pot and let it cook. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's a free, it's a easy, 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 easy cook. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm just going to add a little salt. Okay. How much salt do you normally add to it? Just, that's just option for yourself. I just do this. Okay. Wow. 
and sprinkle a little pepper. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that that pepper brings out the, uh, the flavor. flavor. Yes. Okay. That's the only thing I know about cooking. Pepper brings out the flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, yeah, can you talk about that? That uh, though it's very high, cabbage does. Does it shrink or it, it's, it's going to shrink down? Okay. It's going to shrink down. But I'm going to put it on high because I, I don't want to just want to let it like fry a little bit. Okay. I'm going to be working this. I just got to wait till this be cooked some and then we'll put the rice in and then the bacon will go in last. And then by the time we finish, you know, the bacon don't want to do like. So now, in terms of the. Um Breakfast rice, how long would that take once you cook it, everything? It, it'll probably take about about 20 to 20 minutes, something like that. Not okay. That long. Okay. Because it's just, everything just is waiting on the rice to go in. Mm hmm And the rice, once you put it in, will take how long? It'll probably take about 20 minutes on this. Now, now can you and tell us... Um, uh, what joy you get from cooking, or is it something that you've always just have? I love cooking because I love to eat, and as long as I see the people love what I'm cooking, I just continue to do it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And your grandmother was also a, a good cook. Yes. Yeah. I think every love to eat. If you love to eat, you learn how to cook. That's what I always say. Well, I, I love to eat, but I do not cook. Uh, Laura, I hate to say that, but. Mm -hmm. Because you got to back up, that's why right. you got somebody to cook some food for you, that's what it is. Right. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Now, I have a question. Would you uh, chop up even those smaller sausages as well, or is that? You can. Mm -hmm. You mean for the, for the cabbage, or are you talking on behalf of for the breakfast, breakfast rice? rice? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. okay. No, well, no, I didn't cut them up. I right. just let them stay whole. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, okay. And so now you're adding the turkey sausage, uh, turkey uh, bacon? Yes, I'm, go I'm do it, trying to get these things to fry fast, but it's okay. not going as fast as I like, but it's, it's Does coming. turkey bacon uh, take less time than the regular bacon, or? Well, the regular bacon has got fat, and turkey bacon doesn't really have fat, but it's about the same. Okay. You put it in the microwave, you get it at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you, can you talk about um, the importance as we're uh, waiting on, on these meals here, um, the importance of Sandy Island in terms of its history and... and uh, well, I would never leave. It'll be... I'll be until I die. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I think I, everything that I've wanted and everything that offered me, I think it's right here. Biggest thing is probably when it rains, you got to cross the river. But I know when I come home, I feel secure. I don't have to worry about seeing nobody unless I want to see them. I don't hear unusual noise, very seldom. Mm -hmm. And I just feel mm -hmm. great. And you and um, I, I can talk a, a bit about your beautiful church, yeah. New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. Another I, I won't go, well, I've been to other churches, but I wouldn't want to move my membership. Right. Because people come, people, like you said, pastors, preachers, they come and go, but you always stay where you I'm always going to be here. There, yes. And, and um, there's important a legacy here of the men being able to really build their own homes or yes. the church. Yes. Uh, can you talk about that? That you know, this place had these very skilled. Yes, yeah. we, very skilled. Most of all the houses was built over here. My grand, not my grand, my uncle James Harriet, he built, a, I mean, he done work here. He built houses. He built the majority of the old house here. He built. Yeah. He's legend still. He have a, a, a grandson and he works for um, Singleton Company and that's what he does. He oh, builds. Right. Yeah. He, yes. build, he did this thing. He built this cabinet. This, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's a beautiful church. The church is just, yes. yes, indeed. It was built by the residents here. Yeah. yeah. And there, there was some story that the bricks of a church, and this could be wrong, but they, they were floated over the uh, Watamaw River. Mm -hmm. The bricks were. Did you have here put them yeah. before? Yeah. 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 Yes, indeed. Wow. Because wow. at that time, people didn't have, you know, they just had the rowboat. They didn't really have, um, and when they did get motor at the pool, it still had the 
to use a propeller and drive it. Mm -hmm. so, wow, that's amazing. come a long way. So yes, indeed. It's a lot to appreciate. So, I think know where I go. I will always tell people I'm from Sandy Hall, and if they want to know where I said, well, between Georgetown and Myrtle Beach, <laughs> you, you just have to get on a boat to come across it. And and to that point, many of those who were on the island here would go on a boat to a work in the Myrtle Beach. Yes, I did too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you would, you would go over a boat to Brook Rain. Yeah. Then go on to, a, I guess, a, a bus or so, right? And well, yeah, most of, I guess what, most of the men's had license and could drive, but the ladies didn't. So what they do would ride them far as the Chapin parking lot in Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. and then they would catch the bus and go to wherever they needed to go. Right. And now, God bless most of the ladies, everybody have their own license. They can get in their boat and drive and do wherever they want to go. Right, right. Now, um, the other important, well, there's several, but the other important institution is the Sandy Island School, okay. which is a historic school now. Can you talk a, a bit about attending that school? Well, I attended from uh, first to sixth grade, <laughs> yeah. And I've had, how many school teachers I had? Um, Miss Anna Nelson, I had uh, Teresa Weathers, her sister taught, and also Abraham Abraham Nelson's sister, mm -hmm. Anna, she taught. Right, right. Cleo Jackson, she taught. And we had a lady who came from Georgetown, Janie Lee, she taught. She stayed over with Prince Washington right here on the weekdays because she didn't drive. Right. So she stayed over five days and she'd go back home on weekend. Right. And I went from first to six. And the only thing about the school, they would make sure that you learn something. Right. Well, sometimes we, if we get there late, we get home. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> but now there was there was there was no power no. electricity uh -uh. at all, right? No, uh -uh. Right. So um, can you, can you talk about? Uh, I forgot who it was, but someone said that once you all received power here, mm -hmm. uh, what what year was that? Electricity six, came. Sixty, the sixty-seven or sixty-five. I got it written down that. Right. Yeah, late sixties yeah. or so. Yeah, the 60s, that for the yeah. first time she could stay up late. And study because now she had, you know, light there. Well, I, I don't think that changed too much because <laughs> I think when you know you got home, whether lights or not lights, you do your homework. Because <laughs> if it was time for bed, there was a time for bed. Right, so. right, right, right. It brought, it brought changes on, but it didn't bring that change on. <laughs> <laughs> not for me, anyway. All right, I'm going to do the rice. We're going to put a cup of rice. We're going to do a cup and a half. Okay. Let's see, that's a half right there. And so... Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do now, I'm mm -hmm. going to measure, I'm going to put the half in first. Okay. So I can, so I can put the same amount of water that I put rice in. So I'm going to put that in for next. Then I'm going to put my cup of rice, cup of water in. So I equal out my rice with my water. So if... If someone is doing a smaller version, they could they would okay. do the same thing. Yeah. Equal, equal, equal water, rice. equal rice. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna stir this up. Oh my. Now if our bacon just cooked for us, we will be straight with this and we can let this cook for 30 minutes. But we're gonna let it cook. Now would you would you cover that at some point? I'm gonna cover it. Okay. I'm gonna cover it right now. What do you know? Okay, right now. Okay. Now we work on the bacon. Now, something that I was thinking about as you as we were talking about the church, mm -hmm. I think for many years, didn't you, and, and perhaps still do, cook for the church at times? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, um, when would you have meals at the church? It'd be at the, most of the time we have meals, well, I hate to say it sadly, for our funerals. And then we'll have like church anniversary, mm -hmm. a past anniversary, or uh, men's day. Whenever there's a big thing going on, we'll serve at the church. Okay. Okay. Friends and family day too, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are there uh, typical, um, typical meals for the church? Would it be fried chicken? Would it be sandwiches? Or yeah, Most of the time it's a whole coast meal. We have fried chicken, string beans, ham, um, rice, and macaroni, and cake. Oh my, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. That smells so good, I tell you, wow. I just wonder if this party is on. Okay, gotcha. Now, in the old wood stoves, I'm curious, how would you regulate the 
temperature? Would you, would you, I mean, is there? I don't think it was a temperature. You just put it on. <laughs> <laughs> it just let put it, it go. on and keep stirring until it cook. Just let it go. Regulate what? <laughs> That's a good one, Eric. No, I didn't know. Um, uh, do you do you miss those days though of having that wooden stove? Or, well, the or thing the, about it, I never really got to cook on the wooden stove, but I don't miss the days because I think you had to keep putting wood in and keep it hot, so it had to so the pot could cook, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I always remember my grandma when she her kitchen was not connected to the house. Oh. So you had to walk out of her house to go to her kitchen, and um, stop, the next, stop. The next, you walk out of the house. You walk out of the house to go to the kitchen. And the next time you come over here and I have my Jeep, I'm going to take Stop. you. Stop. Walk out of the house Yeah, and to go the down kitchen. to the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, it was a separate part. Wow. And she would cook and bring the food back in. My. Was that common for most homes? Well, I think hers probably was the only one I was over here was like that. Mm-hmm. Mm, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the next time you come and I have my vehicle, I'm going to show you where my grandparent, grandmother house was at. Oh, please. See, I, this, is my, this is my mother grandparents here. Okay. And my father was up to Georgia Hill. Okay, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. So, and after my father died, then my granddaddy removed my, grand, my mother here into mm -hmm. the house over there. Okay, so, okay. Now, when you were a, uh, a little girl, mm -hmm. um, how far was the walk to school? I know some came well, from miles. Well, that's where I came from, Georgia Hill, until I was in third grade. So how, how long of a trip did it walk? <laughs> well, Lord knows, because a lot of times we stop on the road going and coming. Mm -hmm. I walked one time, I lost my shoes going back. I always, because I was little, but I always remember that, because the older ones, they had us picking berries, looking for blueberry, picking some of every, jugger pan and everything before we even get home. So, <laughs> It was, we had a lot of interesting things over here to do then, right. even though it was, you know, we couldn't get going over there, but there was blueberry, there was jiggy pans and persimmons and all. So we had something oh, to do, gosh. hickory knot, right. walnut, there was always something. Every season, we had something, something to, to do. Yes. Yeah. So it was very interesting, yeah. But I came from Georgia Hill. It was a long walk. Wow. wow. And if you didn't get to school on time, you had, you get a beating. <laughs> oh, shoot. You don't even want to do it. Them teachers didn't play. I know, I know. I know. And then we were, a long time ago, we went to Spelling Bee. Well, what they would do, they would come out the school mm -hmm. and go down to the toilets, and they had to hear us down there. Right. We had to speak that loud. And, and, and there were some, I believe in several papers, it kind of mentions that Sydney Islanders placed in the um, annual Spelling Bees there. Th yeah, I was twice. Really? And I never forget the word I sat down on split. <laughs> I never. <laughs> We went to J.B. Beck, mm -hmm. B3, we were fourth, fifth, and sixth grade one. Charles went, sister went, and I went mm -hmm. here. I think I went twice, but I'll never forget that last year. I sat down on split. It's <laughs> P-L-I-T. I don't know how I couldn't get it together. You couldn't get it together then. Well, pressure, it's pressure. Yeah, and then the thing about it, we were here all, all, all the time, and mm -hmm. we didn't get to go out like other kids, so like we just was challenging, and I think we did good, just right. to able to even go. Right, 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 right. Oh, my. Amazing, amazing. And um, I think during that time period, there was a, um, a, a figure, Prince Washington. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, who I guess some some call the mayor of the island or yes. something like that. Well, I think he he earned his he earned a title. He earned a title. Yes. <laughs> but he was a strong advocate for uh, electricity, for phone, and he really was. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He earned it. Just yeah. whatever his title was, he did earn it. Yeah, yeah. And and of course he he also operated the uh, boat. Yeah, that's what I his. said. He earned it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was quite yeah. a figure. Yes. And a, a, a tall man, I think, wasn't he? Yes, he was a tall <laughs> man. Big Prince. Yes, indeed. They yes. call him Prince. And he was my second cousin. Oh, yes, yes. Wow. Second cousin. Wow. Because yeah. his, yeah, second cousin. Yeah. Even my dad was first. Yeah. So we're second. Yes, Prince. Prince, Prince Washington. Yeah. My gosh. Because yeah. his, his granddaddy, I think, the one that the founders. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Philip. A Washington. I think it was his grand, Granddad, great so. grandfather, yeah. perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was was, was the uh, founder here, the former slave driver. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now is the is the uh, bacon? The bacon is about, just about ready. We're not gonna put a lot in there. 
because we don't have a lot to eat here. We're going to do the trick. Okay. Because it's, it's, cooking, it's cooking pretty good. Okay. Make it cooking pretty good. Now, do you wait until the rice is completely done to add it? When it's baking ready, I'm going to put it inside, and then the eggs be the last thing go in, and then soon we'll be, soon we'll be ready to eat. Oh, my gosh. It's okay. cooking. Oh, look at that. Yes, indeed. So someone could do a smaller version of that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Because I usually do a bit more than this, but we're doing a little thing. Because mm -hmm. I usually come at farmer's market, you know, I usually have the big, the big tray. So right. So I do like two big pots and then put them together. So, yeah, so you do several, uh, you uh, go out and you serve food at uh, farmer's market markets. And... Out, yeah, and anybody who wants me to do something meal for them, I'll do it also. Right. Yeah. In fact, you are catered for our uh, conference. Yes, I did. Yes, yeah. indeed. I had our doctor, um, the dentist in Surfside, I can't call her last name. Mm -hmm. They came over for Christmas. They did their Christmas dinner here. Oh, my gosh. Yes, indeed. Wow. And they wow. did macaroni. Um, oh, I had a bunch of stuff. Right. Now, there's, there's, there's a one dish that uh, you're not doing here. The that, red rice. Well, the red yes, rice that, that that's one. The, that's, yeah. And also chicken bog. Yeah, the chicken bog <laughs> and the fried chicken. Now, what is chicken bog? Chicken bog would be chicken. You're, you cook your chicken and you can take it off the bone and mm -hmm. then you mix your, if you want to add some, cut some sauce, smoke sauces up in it, mm -hmm. and then your rice, like you would fix it, mm -hmm. and put your... That's pretty. It. Yeah. But it's onions it's, and stuff. And but it it's sort of what uh, is it? It cooks. It's gonna cook up like it's gonna cook just like this almost because this would be could be the chicken bog also. Oh, okay. You just would instead of putting this in, you put the chicken in and mm. maybe add some onions. But we're not gonna put no onions in. So onions is uh, the, onions are typical onions, for chicken bog. Uh, yeah, because okay. it would give us that fresh flavor. Onion, but we don't need onions in breakfast rice. <laughs> But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to crunch up the bacon since the fries so nice and crispy. I'm going to put these bacon in a whole slice. Okay. And I'm going to cook, drop it right on top of this. Oh, that, that smells so good. I'm going to put the bacon just like this. Then I'm going to use the same bacon grease and put fry my eggs in it. Oh, wow. So, and that will add more flavor to your eggs? Eggs, yes. Because I'm not going to put no... Yes. And so um, yeah. she's now working on her... On the eggs. eggs here, and you're gonna scramble them. Mm -hmm. And I asked you um, about adding cheese, and you said no. No, no cheese. Don't put cheese in it. No. Why not? Why would that? You don't want cheese in rice. Okay. I don't think so. No, <laughs> this would not work. That would not work. Out. No. I guess uh, in terms of of um, being able to uh, last longer, that cheese might cause an issue. You think or? I don't think you want cheese with rice, though, okay. yeah. Okay. But, um, okay. I don't think the, la the cheese last thing, because, you know, it, cheese age, so I don't think it oh, really matters right, with the cheese. Right, 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 right. Now, so um, once you finish scrambling those eggs, uh, do, do you season the eggs now or no? Not, no, the eggs, are, nothing need to be seasoned because that meat flavor has everything in it. You don't okay. have to put nothing on the eggs. Just make sure that it's cooked, you know, scrambled well and put it right in there. We'll okay. put it in a little bit. And so, and so once that's scrambled, you just add it, fold it into your, okay, okay. Open the pot. So now how, how much longer would this now take as you now gonna, add the eggs? It's not going to be that longer. That's okay. why we want the eggs. So when, okay. And we're going to stir it in. Okay. Oh my, that looks wonderful. So this is a one-pot wonder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful there. Yes, indeed. So there is no need to add salt or anything Nothing. else to it. Nothing. Uh -uh, okay. all the the meat has all the season in it. Okay. Unless you don't want to put some hot sauce, and I don't think you need that either. <laughs> now. At this point, is the heat up high, or you've turned the heat down now for this? I turn it down a little lower. Okay. Yeah, but you can keep it on a moderate, you know, how you said, you know, mm -hmm. for your cooking. You just... mm -hmm. 
Now that looks wonderful. That is, yes, that's... And by the time the cabbage is done, the rice should be ready, hopefully. Okay. And so once you fold that into it, so are you are you careful not to fold too hard, or or is it just just getting it? It should be just right. Just right. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Top back on that. Okay. And we will continue to work on this. Now uh, you put the salt and pepper, pepper. Into, into the in cabbage, the cabbage, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now I'm mixing it up, and the flavor, the season will go through. Okay. And it should be probably about 15 minutes in this, probably 15 or less. Is there um, butter in that too? Yeah, I got some margarine, but you can easily put all in there. People don't really refer too much, you know, grease. Mm -hmm. no, um, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Just come out the pot. Right. Yeah, but well that that is wonderful there. Paper um, towel. Cabbage paper is probably paper, 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 paper towel. Yeah, cabbage is, I think, sometimes overlooked as far as being something that's kind of quick and easy to kind of mm -hmm. uh, cook. Yeah. But um, I've heard many people say that it's you know it it, it cooks very fast. It's very simple mm -hmm. and healthy. Yes. Yeah. And there, and it's not costly. Not costly, right, right, right. And one head of cabbage can. Cut them size, it can serve a lot of people. But when you have the green leaf on it, you, you don't have to throw it away. You can cut the start the green leaf first, and after that, start cooking. Then you can add the other parts, and then it'll come out of taste. Oh a lot my. of people throw the green leaf away because they figure it's gonna not cook as good as the other leaves. So just mm -hmm. and the bread pudding is cooking. All right, so you have your bread pudding in the oven. Loving. The cabbage is cabbage ready. is is cooking down. Mm -hmm. And the rice is about soaking itself almost. That's about done. Oh, yes. And by the time that is, should be finished. Oh, my gosh. The punch would be on the front. I recall back in the 1990s, there was that big um, case about the bridge and having a bridge and not having a bridge. And um, in, the, in the end, you were, uh, the islanders were able to keep their, their land with no bridge. But... Um, uh, some still feel that if they had a bridge, it would be much easier. It would bring more pe people back here. My thing is, like you said, home is home. Mm -hmm. And I don't think bridge or no bridge, if you want to be a place you'll be. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Yes. Because even if you have a bridge, things can happen with a bridge or without a bridge. Because mm -hmm. right now, think about the epidemic that we got going. It's not one place, it's all over the whole United States. So. You just have to keep your trust in God and let him. I guess. Well said. They, they, there you go. Because I think of what a person want to be or what they want to do, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, but people use this excuse because they don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. And I, if you had a bridge, well, you were here when there wasn't a bridge. <laughs> and you weren't able to do half of the stuff that you're doing now. And God bless you. So, so be thankful, you know. Now, it, it, it is for some people, I guess for those who are younger, it's difficult being, you know, being here and not be able to, you know, easily get across the water. Is that an issue at times? I think it's even better for the younger folks to me. Mm -hmm. It should be because a lot of times if they don't want to be bothered with a friend on the other side, they don't have to be. Yeah. It's just like me, myself. I mean, I go every day mostly just sometimes I just go just to get away and mm -hmm. do something different, you know, because sometimes I think people get too caught up in itself. Right. If we get on ourselves, then we can see all the blessings that God has given us. Yes, indeed. Wow. Now your cabbage is, is about done. cooking down, yeah. looking good, yeah. your bed pudding I can smell, <laughs> and your, and your rice. Uh, breakfast rice is, about oh to look top at it that, off. oh my, that looks wonderful. Now for those who like spice, is there? A, would you add maybe you peppers take, or would no, you, no? I would just maybe if you want to just throw a little hot sauce. If you just the person want a hot, 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 mm -hmm. you can put some hot sauce. But I think everything is because you got the maple flavor, you got the honey flavor, and you got the smoke sauce flavor, and then you got the two bacon's and we'll bring that in, and the eggs and just smooth it in. Oh wow! Okay, okay. We just can't wait to taste something. I know it's coming up very soon. Oh, not too long. Now, um, how do you know when your cabbage is 
That's another Done. thing I'm about to say. You can, some people might want to serve it like just like this. Mm -hmm. And then somebody just probably want to just want to cook it down, probably have a little problem with just the eating. Mm -hmm. Like so older people suffer, but young people just want the crunch. So the they know they're getting all the, right. the vitamins. So it, is it important to have that clear, translucent kind of look? Or as you mentioned, sometimes that have it al dente or, or crunchy is, is a preferred. Well, I think it depends on the people who you're serving. Okay. Yeah. If I had an older group, then I would probably let it cook down till it get real soft. But I had a younger group, then I would just made it sort of crunchy like. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you add any more to that um, cabbage? Is that only is it thing I probably would probably sprinkle just a little more pepper, and let it rip because you don't need to have a lot of salt anyway in tape. So. Mm -hmm. And once you get it salty, you can't do anything with it. <laughs> There's nothing in salt. Nothing. <laughs> <Something. laughs> So if it's not that much, you can add. <laughs> so. Now, um, I know some people always add meat to their, or something, some kind of... You can add different flavors, but mm -hmm. we're going to make it sort of simple, because mm -hmm. we're doing something simple that we wouldn't have to go out to the store and buy so much stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use cabbage and a little margarine and a little salt. And wow. But if we want this something going, we can just put some carrots in it. Mm -hmm. Red pepper, bell pepper, even some of the smoked sauces, or even bacon. Right. Fry some bacon, throw it in it too. And that's a good um, dish to serve dinner or something else? Yeah, yeah. Okay. you wouldn't want carrots for breakfast, but we just do this right this for right now right. because we can use this breakfast rice because breakfast is past anyway. Yes, yes, so indeed. So we can just, and if we had some breakfast, I'd leave over for supper and we didn't think, so oh, I just bring a cabbage because I still got some more of this and then we'll have that also. Oh, wow, yes, indeed, indeed. And is that very typical uh, in terms of using food for different, you know, if I have some left over, it'll, it'll work for this? Yeah, yeah. that way, we're not going to throw away. Right, right, right. And we about ready, you know, almost. Ooh. Is that about, ooh. I think this is, is ready. Is that about done? Oh, that is wonderful. It seems to have even kind of grown up. Has it as risen? The you, as the more, yeah, yeah. When you cook it, yeah. Yeah, because it started down to and just. Yes, wow, okay. So I think we have a finished version of the bread pudding here. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us how you know when that is ready to take out the oven? Because everything will be like down. Once you put it in, it will look in almost like this. Mm -hmm. And then it start cooking, and as, as the flavor as it get darker, then you would tell. Okay. And when it finished, it's, it's puffed up right now. But once you set it aside, it'll sink down more. Do yeah. you uh, put a fork, or, or you just kind of know just yourself? Yes, I just sort of know, because mm -hmm. the whole thing have to be this sort of dried up. Right, and that, and that kind of brown kind of yes, that part color to over brown. Yeah, I mean, the, well, I look dark like that because the raisin, you know, raisin is already dark and it just made it work. Right, right, right. If you use apples, would that change? No, the, the apple, would, it would just would be, it wouldn't have the raisin, you know, it would just be there. Okay. But it, and it'd be more juicier, the mm -hmm. apple. Okay, okay. But you're going to taste a little apple inside this also, because I got, I mixed some apple in oh, there. Oh, okay, one. okay. I didn't do the one I did here, but I, that one has it. Now, some people, people put, have a, they add a, a, um, you a can, glaze or something. Yeah, you it. can put glaze over it, or you can even ice cream. Oh, yeah. yes, indeed. Okay. Because you can throw it, put it in the microwave, it'll get cold and heat it up, and then put the ice cream on top. Oh, mercy, Jesus. All right, so that's, so that is the finished look there of the bread pudding. I think we're going to let the cabbage go. What do you think? And the cabbage, oh yes. Oh mercy, yes. Okay. All right. I think, I think. And the two force right here is this wonderful breakfast rice. Oh, that looks, oh, look at that. Oh mercy, that looks wonderful there. So, audience members, that is breakfast rice there, uh, we have the cabbage here, and for dessert... The bread pudding, and, and if you're having some special occasion, you want to do the punch. And you can add the fruit cocktails if you have it in a punch bowl, but if you're serving it in a fountain, don't put the fruit cocktail in because it's going to mess up your fountain. <laughs> yes, indeed it will. All right. and, and we're just so happy that you 
allowed us to kind of look at you cooking and, and sharing your stories and of course making these wonderful gala meals here. Um, we thank you so much on behalf of Coastal Carolina University, our president, our students, faculty members, we so thank you so much. And you are welcome. I'm happy to have story anytime. Call me if I'm available, I'll be happy to do it. Yes. This has been a pleasure. And I thank you for selecting me to even give me the honor to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.